Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 76 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon, and you can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot simpler if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 75. But I must start by asking, were you successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend double chest bump. And if you were not successful, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay. Now, hopefully most of you guys were successful, but I will admit that this required some real thinking about how to make this thing work. Now, what was the homework assignment? You were to use the IR remote and connect the IR receiver to your Raspberry Pi Pico W and then create a useful command stream. And what I said was you would start the command by hitting the power button. You would then enter a series of keystrokes and then you would press the EQ button and that would then create an array of that useful set of keystrokes that you had created. And then once you have that useful set of keystrokes, you could go out and do something useful with them. But it was to just create that array that recorded the keystrokes. Now, last week I showed you how to just read a digit from the remote. And so we loaded the libraries and we learned how to create that callback function. We learned how to do all of that where you could read individual uh, button pushes from the remote. But the problem is down in your main program, you could be doing whatever and you can't just have random keystrokes coming in. You have to compile those keystrokes into a useful array. Okay. Now, I say that you very much have to go back and watch lesson number 75 because I showed you how to install the libraries and I showed you how to get an individual button push from the remote. So you need to go back and watch that. But let me just show you very briefly how we have this thing hooked up. I will get out of your way. I will have a little bit of my go juice. And I need you to just pretend that this happy little blue servo isn't here because in today's lesson, we're just going to be using the infrared receiver and the infrared remote. Now, I showed you last week how to hook this up. And what we saw is we saw that, that when the little half LED is pointing towards you, the left pin, the left pin is the control pin, and we have that hooked up to GPIO pin 17. Can't remember last week if I used GPIO pin 17 or not, but this week the control signal is hooked to GPIO pin 17. Okay. Then the center, the center pin on the uh, LED, the, the IR receiver is connected to the brown, uh, the ground rail. And then the positive, the, the, the rightmost <clears throat> The rightmost leg of the receiver is connected to the power and the power comes over and it goes to 3.3 volts, which is physical pin 38. So you've got physical pin 38. Is that right? We've got ground is 38. I'm sorry. Ground is pin 38. And then we have physical pin 36 coming down and creating our power rail. So physical pin 36 creates our power rail 
and uh, ground creates ground, and we are co connected to GPIO pin 17. Hopefully I didn't <clears throat> confuse you. I might, might have said it wrong one time, but I think you can see how we have it hooked up. And now what was the assignment? The assignment was to do <clears throat> something like this. I think you can see this where we learned last week that we can individually see that a button has been pushed, but we want to compile button pushes into a useful command. And so I, I press power. Let's see. I wonder if I can back this off. Okay. So I'm going to press power. Okay. And then that tells, I guess I should, I guess I should run the program first. So, this is what the assignment was. You were to get something like this. So I create, I press power, and that lets the system know I'm going to enter my command, and then I'm going to type a four and a five, and then the EQ, and then boom, what do I get? Power, meaning that I'm starting my command. I'm getting an array that has power, meaning the command was started. I entered a four, I entered a five, and then I pressed EQ, EQ and then that was the enter. So I could do star, I could do start with the power button and then I could press minus plus one, two, three and then enter and then look, I get power and then I see that minus was pressed, plus was pressed, one, two, three and then I ended the command with the enter. Now if I just come in and start pressing keys nothing is going to happen. Why? Because I didn't, uh, because I didn't actually go in. I, now this just tacked it on to the end one because I didn't press the power. But if I just come in and press keys, nothing happens. Nothing happens until I press power and then one, two, three, and then equal to enter, and I've got power one, two, three. So the sequence is power to start recording the keystrokes, and then the EQ to go in and finish it up, okay? So if you guys were successful, you did pretty good because this wasn't a really very easy thing to do. It required a lot of thought, but I had taught you all the things that you needed in order to write this program. So let's come over here and let's jump in and start, let's start doing our coding, okay? And so the first thing that we are going to want to do is we're going to want to import time, okay? And then from machine, import pin uh, and do I need frequency? I don't think I need frequency. No, I don't need that there. So I'm just going to import pin there like that. And then I'm going to import those libraries that we installed last week. So what do I need to do from ir underscore rx dot print underscore error. So this will give us error messages if we need it. From that, I'm going to import print underscore error like that. That looks good. Now from ir underscore rx dot nec, nec, I'm going to import nec underscore eight. And I explained all that last week. Okay, now let's just run it to make sure that we can import those libraries. Okay, what? Ned eight, huh? Good thing I checked it. That is NEC8. I said C and I typed D. So that all looks good. Now I need to create a dictionary that will look at the strange but yet unique integer that is associated with each button push and assign that to a more meaningful uh, identifier. Now it could be a number, an integer, for the zero through nine, and then it could be a command or a string associated with the other ones. So what does that sound like we need? It sounds like we need a dictionary to keep track of that data. So IR dictionary is equal to, now I went through with the program from last week and just put, pressed each button to see what the unique integer was that was coming off of each of those buttons. And what I learned was I learned that 69 was returned when I pressed the power button. So if I press the power button, it returns the number 69. So I want to map 69 to what? Power. And I will just make that a string. 
Okay. Then I found that the next button over returned a 70, and that was the back button. Okay. And so the, this, well, that, uh, no, 70 was down here. These aren't in any particular order. Okay. So I just assigned the, uh, the number that I got from the button to a meaningful, to a meaningful uh, thing. So 70 was the next one over and that was mode. Okay. I just mistyped. So if you press the mode button, it gives you a 70. So if I see a 70, I know what button was pushed, the mode button. Okay. Then pin 71, or I found that pin off returned to 71. So this button here, if you press that, it returns the integer 71 like that. Okay. And then I'll put a comma. Now, if I hit an enter, uh, let's see. So that's that comma that. Okay. And then a comma. I don't know why that came all the way over. I probably, ah, uh, there's an error here. Let's just use all single quotes. I'm getting sloppy and switching back and forth. So that, and let's just use all single quotes to make a string. You can do it either way, but you know, like this. Okay, there it comes over. And remember, this is all one long line. And so you really don't have to worry about indent here. I'm just breaking one long line up into multiple lines in Thonny just to make it easier. Now, what I found is a 68 was returned if I pressed the play button. So I want to map play, which is this one, to 68. Because when I press this button, I saw that it was returning a 68. Okay. Then uh, what I found is that if I press the back button, I got a 64. So 64 needs to be mapped to back. So if I see a 64, I look it up in the dictionary and I know that the button that was pressed was the back button like that. Okay. And this is a little bit tedious, I will admit. Okay. Then I found that if I got a 67, that that was from a 67 came from if I pressed forward. So if I press forward, it will return a 67. So 67 needs to map to forward like that. Close it and then a comma. Let's see, you can still, you can still read that. And so then what I will do over here is I found that if I did the, I'm going to go to the next line. Okay. Just so to make sure that you can see it. I found that if I press the enter key, this EQ, this EQ, which I'm calling the enter key, it returned a seven. And so seven corresponds to enter like that. Okay. And then after enter, the next one over is minus. I found that minus corresponded to 21. So 21 was returned if I typed in the minus. So if I see a 21 returned, I'm going to map it to minus like that. Okay. So let's come on over. All right. I think I am going to go ahead and hit a new line. Okay. So I've gotten all the way through minus. Okay. Now I should probably do plus and I found that it returned a nine, an integer nine. If the plus button was pressed like that comma. This is tedious, isn't it? Then I found what's next. If I press zero, I got a zero back. No, if I press zero, I got a 22 back. So 22, if I see a 22, I know that that corresponds to a zero. Now I'm going to map that to the integer zero because if I'm pressing numbers, I might as well get a number. Okay. So I've got 22. Okay. And uh, then what I found is that if I pressed a next one over, a, a zero returned, zero press returns a 22, then this loop, this loop button, 
it returned a 25. So if I see a 25, what do I need to do? I need to uh, make that loop the string. Okay, we're gonna keep going. I found that if I press the USD button, I got a 13 back. So I'm gonna say 13. If I see a 13, I wanna map that to USD. Okay, and then gonna to go to the next line. Now I found if I pressed one, I would get 12 back. So if I see a 12, I know that that corresponds to a one. And then if I pressed a two, I would get a 24 back. So that needs to map to the number two. And then uh, I found that if I press three, I got 94. So 94 needs to map to a three like that. Okay. And now I found if I pressed the next one over, which was, uh, that was nine, right? I did, no, I did three. The next one be, would be four. And if I press four, that returned an eight. So if I see an eight, that should really be a four. Now, can you imagine doing this without a dictionary? This is showing you the power of the dictionary, and that is why I taught you how to do dictionaries. I find that if I press a five, it will return 28. So 28 should map to five, like that 28 should map to five. And then I put a comma in. And then if I press six, if I press six, I got a 90 back. So if I see a 90, that really means a what? A six, okay, a comma. And then what I found is I'll just do 66 was returned if I press seven, okay. An 82 was returned if I pressed eight. And a 74 was returned if I pressed a nine. And so if I see a nine, if I see a 74, it really means a nine. Now, how many mistakes did I make in here? I better just run this. Okay, line eight is a mistake. So I have nine is a plus, 22 is a zero, not, uh, 25 is a loop, 13 is a USD. I am not seeing my error there. Maybe I need to do it like that. Okay, line eight. Ah, I didn't put a comma after 21 maps to minus comma like that. So let's try that. Okay, so at least it took the values. So I have the dictionary now, okay? I wonder if I could print it out down here, IR dictionary. Uh, yeah, it still knows it. So what if I have, what would IR dictionary of, I let's see that I see a nine. Okay, I'm reading a nine. And that would, I, I'm reading a nine, and that would correspond to a plus. Okay, so if I see a nine, that means I hit the plus. So the dictionary looks good. Now, I might have put a wrong value in here, so we'll have to verify that that dictionary really maps this. But this is really the heart of the program, and that is the part that is going to be the most tedious. Now we can jump in. What do I want to do? I want to build a command, and it will have power, comma, and then the keystrokes, and then comma, and enter. So I need to have an array to keep those values in, but initially it is empty, so I'm gonna call it the new command array, and it is empty, okay? Now, I need to figure out, do I need to start recording keystrokes? Well, I record keystrokes if I see the power button, but I am going to need to have a variable begin, record, well, up here, haven't seen the power button yet, so I'm just going to initialize that to false. And then also, once I hit the power, then it's gonna it's gonna make uh, it's gonna make be begin record true. And then similarly, once I hit hit e uh, the EQ or the enter button, then that is going to mean that I complete that array. So I need a variable to say that I need to start recording, and I need a variable to say that the command is finished. So cmd ready, certainly we don't have a command yet, and so this is false. Now I'm just setting these up because I know I'm gonna need them later and I've gotta initialize the variables. As I use them, it will make more sense.
Okay, now where is our, our IR? Our IR pin was equal to pin of IR pin. No, IR pin is 17. I got to set up IR pin. So IR pin, we said, was connected to GPIO pin 17. And now I need to create an object for that pin. So my I R my I R is going to be equal to the method pin of what the I R pin, and then that is a pin dot n like that. All this this stuff the I R pin and my my I R I explained last week. So we've got that set up. Now what do we have to do? We have to set that callback function. That callback function. So when a button is pressed the library will call callback, okay? Now, I'll go ahead, before I define my callback function, I'll go ahead and remind you that we create our IR object is equal to NEC underscore eight, the method, okay? And then my IR, the IR pin, so I've got to tell the library my IR pin, I've got to pass that to it, not pin 17, not IR pin, but my IR, which is the object associated with that pin that we created. And then I've got to tell it, when I see a button pressed, which of my functions should the library call to pass it what the button press was? And we're going to call that callback. So I load the libraries when a button is pressed their library calls what? My callback function. Now I've got a what? I've got to come up and I have to define that callback function. So define callback. And so their library calls callback. I never call callback. Their library calls callback. And what does it do? Well, it's going to return a number. And it's going to return one of these doofus numbers like 68 and 69 or 22. And then I'm going to have to map that to a meaningful designator. Okay. So I'm going to call this R IR bit because it returns just one number the number associated with the button. So it just gives me one at a time, no organization. Press a button, it calls callback, and it sends callback the number of the pin that was pressed. Now, you have to put in ADDR, and you have to put in CTRL, and we don't know what those do. They don't do anything, but they've got to be there, okay? Now, <clears throat> this function has to interact with the main program. So I have to say that global is new command. And so if this callback function changes new command, everywhere in the program knows what the, the new command is. And similarly, go global, begin, record, and then global and CMD ready, okay? and then global IR dictionary. Okay, I don't think I'm really going to need that. I don't think that needs to be global because that's only going to be used here inside the function like that. So I think it's these three that have to be global. So what does new command mean? It means that I have a new command that I'm building. That is the command itself, which would be the array the array that I set here. And that would be like power, comma, one, comma, two, comma, three, and then enter. So that will be the array. So what am I doing inside of define callback? I am, or what am I doing inside of the callback function? I am going to build this new command. And other people are gonna need that new command, so I make it global. And then begin to record, it's when I start it, and then command ready. I don't even think I need begin record. I need it, but I don't, I don't, yeah, I need to make it global, and that way it will know that begin record starts as a false. Okay, so yeah, it does need to be global. Okay, so now I've got those three things defined as global, right? And I have to define callback 
before I have it show up here. So I have to define the callback function, and then when I create my IR object and it sees callback, it knows what callback is. Okay. Now, what is the power key? So I want to kind of, it's going to be sending, if I just start typing things here, it's going to be receiving inside of callback, it's going to be receiving those uh, IR bits one at a time. But basically, I want to ignore them unless I have seen the power, the start, the start record, the power key. I want to ignore those bits unless I have seen that. And the power key is the number 69. And so what I can do here is I can say if IR bit equal equal 69, that tells it that the power button has been pressed. Well, what do I want to do there? I want to say it's time to begin recording. So begin record is equal to true. Why? It's all the power button, so I need to start recording, okay? And then what I need to do is I need to reset new command equal to the empty. Why do I do that? Because I might have defined new command last time through, and then the next time through, I've got to reset it to nothing. So I start with it nothing, and then once I get in here, I want to make sure that it's nothing. I'm wondering, you might be able to just do it in, in just here, but you have to at least do it here. So the second time you send a command, it doesn't just tack it on to the old command. And now, is my command ready? CMD ready? No, it's not ready. Why? I'm just starting to record it. So I've got to make sure that it says, you don't have a command yet. So I set it to false because I'm just starting to record it now. How do we build the command? Well, if begin record is true, okay, so it saw the power button, it saw 69, so it set things up and it says you're ready to record, begin record is gonna be true because it saw the power button, 69. It clears out the new command and it says no, the new command is not ready yet. So now if begin record equal equal true and IR bit is not equal to minus one. Well, what was that? Last week we saw that if I sat and just held the button down, it would give me the number associated with that button and then it would just give minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Until, unless you took your finger off real quick. So if I press it and I hold it too long, what do I want to do? I want to ignore those minus one. So only if begin record is true and I haven't gotten a rep repeated button push by holding it down too long, I want to ignore those. But what do I want to do? I want to build my new command and how do I add that new value? I append. And what do I append? Well, I could append IR bit. But if I appended IR bit, what would I be getting? I would be getting 69, 68, 9, 22. I would be getting the confusing numbers. What do I want? I want the intuitive number. So, like, I don't want it to return or put in that command 68. I want to put in, put in that command, that new command, play. So how would I do that? Well, here I would not do IR bit. I would do IR dictionary of IR bit, like that. So now as I'm building the new command, it is going to look something, I don't have it there, but it's going to look something like open the list, and then power, because that starts it, and then comma, things like one, two, three, four, or mode, or play, or rewind. So I'm getting the intuitive values that are put in the new command, okay? Now, we, we've, got this, we've got it started, and we're tacking those things on. Now we have to see if we should end. If I, R, bit, 
is equal equal to what? The enter or the EQ. Well, what is the enter or the EQ? It is seven. So I come down here and I can say seven. Okay. Or what I could also say is if I R no, I, if I R bit is equal equal seven, because I'm just working with that last keystroke, just the raw number coming off. If that I R bit, that's the raw number. If that raw number is seven, what do I want to do? I now have a command that's ready to use. So command ready is going to be equal to true. Okay. So when it sees the power, when it sees 69, the power, it does what? It says it's time to record. You're going to clear out the old command and you're going to say command ready is false because you're just starting to record it. All right. Now, if begin record is true, which it will be true if you hit the power button and if it's not a repeated key by holding that key down too long, then what do you do? You build the command. OK, now if you see the seven, that means you saw the equal. Now you want to stop the command and you say command ready is true. OK, you say command ready is true. That tells the rest of the program that you have a what? That you have a command. Now I'm going to get rid of these blank spaces here. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, stop and watch that part again. OK. Now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to come down here and I want to do it cleanly so I can exit cleanly. So I'm going to do a try. And then what am I going to do in tr uh, it, what am I going to do and try? That is a big ugly mess, isn't it? I think I messed up twice. Okay. Then I'll say while true. Okay. And then I'm just going to pass because I want to finish the rest of this program. I'm going to say X except keyboard interrupt okay so if i'd get a control c i want to close my ir what is ir that is that infrared object that i created where did i create it create it here i'm going to close it out now so next time i run the program there isn't anything lingering going on and then print program terminated okay now I haven't really done anything yet but I just want to see if the program works yeah so the program works and then if I press keys nothing particular happens okay and so there's nothing particular happening as I'm pressing keys because those keystrokes are going in there, but I'm not doing anything with them yet here. So let's just come in and let's just make sure this is working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print an IR bit just to make sure that this callback is working. So if I do that and I come up here and I press one, I get a 12 in the minus one. You see, if I press the two, I get a 24 and a bunch of minus ones. And so this is just simply printing the wrong, uh, the, the raw bit. Now you can see I've got to ignore those, those negative ones. So if I press a zero, I get a 22. I want to ignore the minus one and I don't want to put 22 in my new command. I want to put what in my new command? I want to put a zero because zero goes with 22. And that's why I did it like this new command dot append IR dictionary of IR bit. And then that will give me the good things that I want. So new command is global. Why? Because when I get down here, it will know what new command is. And then command ready. I don't want to try to get the command before it's ready. So I need command ready and I, I need command ready and I need new command to be global. And then I really don't think I'm going to live dangerously. I don't think I need begin record as global. OK, so let's see here. Let's just run it. I'm just trying to see if this thing runs. OK, so I'm putting ah, maybe I did need that. I think I did need that. Let's think about that. So what did I take out? I took out begin record. Uh, 
Yeah, so it has to have a value. It has to have a value because I say if begin record and it doesn't have a value yet. So I need to make it global so it gets it. Uh, it gets it, okay. So it gets it from up here. So it knows what it is. It crashed because it didn't have a value. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, and if I punch a, ah, okay. I misspelled it, record. Okay, so now I press a bunch of buttons and it's just showing me the individual buttons that I'm pressing. Okay, now let's just see, just for fun, let's come down here and let's print just to make sure that we're getting it because I want to make sure this callback works before I go down and develop the, uh, the uh, main program. So now I'm going to print new command, okay? And so now I'm going to run it, okay? And then if I press one, I just get, it's, you know, I, I get the 12 that's associated with the one, okay? One corresponds to 12. So the raw bit, if I press one, it's a 12, but you see how it's not going in new command. New command is remaining empty, even though I'm reporting what the individual button pushes are. So now I'm going to press the power button and boom, it has power, okay, in the array. Now if I press one, it adds one to it, two, it adds two to it, and three, it adds three to it. But what do you see that's kind of cool? It's building it, but down here, it would not use it because I'm only gonna use it if command ready is true and command ready is not true because I haven't pressed that equal button yet. Does that make sense? And so let's, let's try it this way. What if I say only print if command ready is equal, equal true. Only if it's true will I print it. And then I need to tab this over. So then I come here. Okay, now I'm going to go one, two, three. I get those raw numbers, but they are not going in. Now I'm going to press power and it got the 69. One, two, three. Why is it not printing new command? Because command ready isn't ready yet. It's not true yet because I haven't pressed EQ, which is seven. So I press EQ and boom, I got, it saw the power which means it's gonna start recording. It recorded the one, the two, the three, and then it got the enter. And so now what command ready is true? Well, it is command ready is true up here, but it is also true down here. So what do I wanna do down here? Now I wanna start working on that program. So while true, now I wanna say if command ready, meaning that I now have a complete command. If that's equal to true, what do I want to do? I want to print new command. And then what I think I should do is I should also say command ready because I've read it. Now I have it. Command ready is equal to false. Okay. Meaning you sent me a new command. I got the new command. Now I'm going to clear it out. Okay, let's see if I really need to do that. So now let's see, ooh, line 38. What did I do, Rad? Command ready. Why did I get a error there? Oh, no, no colon. This is not Arduino. Okay, so now I'm going to do power. I'm going to do one, two, three. And now I'm going to do enter and I've got power one, two, three, enter. Now that negative one, don't worry about it because that came from up here. So now that we see it's working, let's take that out and now let's run it. So I'm going to hit power and then one, two, three, and then EQ for enter. And then what do I get? Power one, two, three, enter. So now in the main program, I've got a complete, I've got a complete, I've got a complete command that's ready to use. Now, I don't know if I really need to set it false there because that might have been taken care of. So let's run it and I say,
power and one, two, three, and then equal, and I get power one, two, three. Now, what's the problem? Now it's just looping and printing and looping and printing. And so I do need that there just so that once I get that, it stops it. So I've got to stop it here as well. So CMD ready is equal to false like that. Okay. Now what I do is I come here, I run it. And now let's look at all the values. I'm going to say start recording. I'm going to do mode. I'm going to do off. I'm going to do play. I'm going to do rewind. I'm going to do forward. I'm going to skip EQ because I don't want that to end my command. I'm going to do minus plus zero loop USD one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now I'm going to, I'm going to enter it there. Let's see there. Okay. Maybe I didn't stop it last time. Let me control C. I'm going to have to crash this thing. Okay, there it is. Let me try it again. I think I didn't rerun the program. It doesn't like line 37. Command ready is equal to false. Man, why do I keep putting that colon there? Isn't that twice I've done that? Other than that, I feel like this has been an excellent lesson. What do you think? Okay, so I'm going to press power and then mode and then stop and then play, and then rewind, and then forward, and then I'm sk skipping equal, minus, plus, and then zero, loop, USD, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and now what am I going to do? I'm going to press equal, and then boom, look at that. I got, let's check and make sure I've got power mode off and then I've got play back forward. I skip equal. I've got minus plus and then I've got zero loop USD one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then brought it on home with an enter. Look at that. So now I have a useful command down here that I could do things with. So if the command was play, I could play something. If command was stop, I could stop something. I could put in parameters with the numbers. So you see now we've turned this next to useless little gadget into something that will actually create for us a usable, create for us a usable program. Now there were some things I was wondering about up here. Okay, so here what if I what if I did not make command ready? What if I didn't put that there? Okay, I don't think that has to be global. Okay, but I will set it command ready equal false. I think like that. Let's see if that will work. Okay, so now I'm going to do power one, two, three, and equal. Let me try it again. Power one, two, three, equal. Now it's got to be up there because here every digit resets it to false. Okay, every digit resets it to false. So I need to do a global. Uh, and then what was that? That was uh, command ready. And then it gets it from up here so it doesn't keep setting it to false every time something is hit. So there was a reason to do that. But I think begin mm. record, begin record has to come in the same way as false. Otherwise it would set it false with each additional digit. So there was a reason that I did it that way and it was a good reason. And then command ready has to be set here false or otherwise it would just keep printing the command because it stays true. So between here in this part of the code, you can put all the things that you want to do. Okay, all the things that you would want to do, you can do there. Okay, guys, this might be one that you have to watch a couple of times, but if you follow through it, 
hopefully it will make sense. And it was kind of a little bit of a challenging. This would be an uber legend if you did this on your own. But if you were not able to do it on your own, then turn my video off and think through it and see if you can do it on your own after you saw me do it, okay? It's time for us to talk about homework, okay? Time for us to talk about home, homework. So what I want you to do is I want you to add a servo to your setup. And then what I want you to do is I want you to come in. I'm going to press power. I better run the program. Okay, I better run the program. Okay, this is the homework. Okay, so I'm going to press power. And then I'm going to say that I want to go to 135 degrees. And then I want to press enter. And boom, look at that. Went to 135. I, I didn't really want that. I really wanted 45. Enter. Boom. Really? No. No. I really wanted 5 degrees equal. Look at that. I really wanted... 179 enter boom okay guys i am really hoping that this next homework assignment will be pretty easy because if you i've done the hard part here which is generating the command now that you can generate the command what I want you to do is go do something useful with the new command that you generate from this. And as a demonstration, we are controlling this servo. Now notice if I just come in and do a bunch of nonsense and then say equal, nothing happens. But I can come in and say power and then 45 and equals, and there it is at 45 degrees. So you see I'm ignoring. Also notice that I'm not deliberately doing short button pushes to avoid the negative one. The software avoids the negative one for long uh, button pushes. Also though, see that it works. I could do star and I could do 22 and it will recognize that because it's ignoring the minus ones, but a two let up a two, it would be like two, negative one, negative one, negative one, and a two, it works for that. So you can get repetitive button pushes. You can get repetitive button pushes, but the long button push doesn't uh, doesn't hurt you. Okay, guys, man, this is some heavy duty stuff that we're doing here. Let me know if I'm making these things too hard. I don't want to make them too hard, but what are we doing? We learned how to do dictionaries. We learned how to use callback functions that are not called by us, but that are called by the library that we're using. And then we've thought very carefully about how to coordinate what is going on in the callback with what is going on in our main program. And this is actually something that a lot of the devices that we interact with, a lot of the devices that we interact with are going to use callback functions. So you've got to get really comfortable in using callback. So what have we learned in object-oriented programming? We've learned how to do classes. We've learned how to do methods. We've learned how to do functions. We've learned how to create our own libraries. And we've learned how to use both cores on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And hopefully today, what you've learned is the power of knowing how to use a dictionary. Now on this particular, on this particular homework, we didn't need to use, we didn't need to use that other core because the main library, that NEC library or that RIR underscore RX, it's taking care of all that. And I don't think it's using the other core. It is probably just using interrupts or something like that to make it work. So they've done the hard part. And then we just had to figure out how to get the callback going. Okay, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking this class these classes as I am making them. As always, shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. Great big thanks to you guys. Also, you can help me by giving me a thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. That will help me with the YouTube juice and this video will be shown to more people. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, when you do ring the bell so you'll get notifications when future lessons drop. And most importantly, share the video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter, 
with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.